So in the previous video, we just set out um, the geometric Brownian motion and how that might be specified for stock price movement. And in this video clip, um, I'm going to look at just how we might model the stock price and simulate its behavior over a period of 12 months. And so we could think that in the current time period, or in the initial time period, the value of a stock is equal to 100. And then we would say, okay, in line with what we have here, we would say, well, the stock price, the next stock price, would be equal to the previous stock price, multiplied by EXP, open bracket, and then we have, and we open bracket again, <coughs> and we, in the previous video clip, we worked out what was here between the parentheses, so it was 0 0.3, and that gets multiplied by the change in the time period, which if it's a monthly, if we're looking at monthly intervals, that's 1 12th of a year, and that's what we had here, 1 over 12. Okay, and then we add on, we add, sigma multiplied which is 0 0.2 multiplied by a random shock which conforms to normal distribution so we say that's captured by norms inverse random and we mod we viewed how that behaves um, in the previous video clip so norms norms inverse open brackets rand open bracket, close bracket, close bracket, okay, and we multiply that by the square root of the change in the time period, so we say multiply again by 1 over 12, and we take that to the power of a half, so that we have a square root, and we return, okay, so if we F9, <coughs> that'll change. Okay, so let's have a look at this again. Okay, so looking at this again, so the previous stock price, 100, gets multiplied by the drift, and I presume we should lock the cell reference here, so F4, that's the drift, by the time period, and again the time period here, C2, and we should lock that cell reference, so C4 plus C3, C3 is the volatility figure, and again, we should lock the cell reference, norms inverse rand, that'll change randomly, and again, the change in the time period, C2, we lock the cell reference, okay, and then we can pull that across, okay, and if we want to model the behavior here, of the, if we want to observe what's going on here, we could just take, well, um, we could go to insert, scatter, and we could, uh, our line style, in fact. So line, and we could right click, select data, add, and we'll say stock simulation stock price simulation and the series of values that we will take starting time period zero and then click OK and then we edit and we put the label here zero Okay, so that underneath here we have time period zero. And hit OK. And so what we observe here is the just the random behavior of the stock price over the period. If we hit F9, that will change. Right? Keep hitting F9, it's randomized. Uh, we could increase the volatility just to observe the effect. 
So let's put this up to 0 0.4. And you can see the behavior is more dramatic if we put this down to 0. Uh, we should get something that resembles a straight line, although it's not really a straight line, it would be more slight of a slight curve. We could change this to um, back to point 0.1. Of course, all the time there's, a thing, there's an effect on the drift here. We've linked the two and F9. 0.2 Okay, so that's our random behavior and we've done that for uh, in each instance one path was considered question arises could we replicate this for many pathways okay so um, so we could consider the following and this takes the simulation into a kind of Monte Carlo type sphere. So let's just copy everything here. Copy home, copy, and I'll call this Monte Carlo. Um, perhaps because Monte Carlo is the technique used to exploit simulation. So I'll say crude and return. And let's, okay, we've copied everything and just paste. Okay, now some things we can remove. So perhaps we could just take out, uh, we could delete these cells and in turn perhaps move this up just to make a little bit of space and we could pull this up as well. Delete and shift cells up. Okay, and delete. And uh, what if we generated more behavior, more pathways? Okay, now I have to be careful here. Um, I should have initially put initially put one hundred in each of these cells. So one hundred. Try that again. Okay, so F4, and then pull this down. So it should be 100, 100. And I think everything else is really corrected here. And now let's try to insert a graph just to visualize. So insert line. And we have series one. That's not a. Let's look at the design here for something simpler. Okay, so in fact, the way the graph has appeared here, it's taken each of these columns, and because we have 100 here as series one, or I think it's series one. Okay, so if we go right click, select data, and then reverse switch row and columns. Okay, we can see how the stock price has evolved over time. And what we're looking for here is the fanning out. And then um, perhaps we could um, change the format just a little bit in terms of our overall design. And we can, could consider different designs. Okay, let's just, um, one possibility here, just to visualize, is just make the graph bigger. Um, pull down, if we F9, you can see the behavior changes a little bit. Uh, we could change the volatility again, just to observe the effect. And again, as we increase volatility, we can see that the behavior of the stock price paths uh becomes wilder if we change it to 0 0.01 and uh, you can see the stock price behavior aligns um with very s small fanning out uh, gradual upward increase in the value of the uh, stock but um 
where the stock grows at roughly about 5% over the course of the year, and then you have a distribution at the end of the year around that. Again, if we increase that to 20%, we get this range here. Okay, so that's uh, a stock price simulation. How do we convert this to Monte Carlo? Take these values again. Home copy paste. Uh, we'll remove the chart and we could take the <clears throat> okay we could say okay what's the value of an option if uh, typically we're interested in knowing the value of an option and we know that the value of the option is equal to at expiration the maximum of s minus x zero so the value the intrinsic value of an option is the stock price or the terminal price of the stock minus the exercises are zero okay and if we were to say discount that back to today we'd say equal to exp open bracket negative r multiplied by T close bracket multiplied by maximum s minus x. So we could set that out here. We just have to specify an exercise price. And that's equal to, <coughs> we can put a familiar value here. And we could again say, okay, equal to maximum of the terminal stock price minus the exercise price exercise is 100 as well f4 zero close brackets and we could multiply exp just a discount back for one time one year we could discount at r multiplied by the time period of one year because it's a 12-month period. Okay, and then we can pull this down. And where the value of S falls below 100 at expiry, the value, the intrinsic value of the option is zero. Let's pull this down quite a way. And we're already down to a thousand. Okay, and the final value here is one six one six one six. It's the cell reference. Okay, so we could say equal to average of this cell all the way down to let's put in a sum colon colon a uh, p one six one six close brackets and our results should be close to 1045 uh, because that's with these parameter inputs uh, we've used before using Black-Scholes model, the value of an option would be about 10.45. So let's return that and see. And if we F9 that, not, it still seems to be out of kilter. Now there's probably a slight issue here in terms of setting out this value here. Let's have a look. So we F four that's correct but the discount factor i forgot to make an f4 on the discount factor so let's return that try it again and pull all the way down to 1616 i think okay 1616 and come back Take a look again at our, okay, so.